Welcome to the last episode, episode 5. Today we'll be talking about putting everything together. Let's get to it. So, you've found your space, you've been inspired, you've created your movement, and you've figured out what you're going to do with your audience. In this final video of our series, we are going to discuss all of the other production elements that go into creating a site-specific production. We will discuss how sound, lighting, costume, and set design can all support your movement in the telling of your story. Now, all of these production elements are very powerful storytelling tools unto themselves and our entire fields unto themselves. So this also can present a really exciting opportunity to collaborate with people who are set, costume, lighting, sound designers. If you're interested in learning about any of these technical fields, we highly suggest looking into it because they are wonderful and fascinating fields. We will use Frog in Hand's Stories in the Woods as a case study to examine how all of these production elements work in a full evening length show. Now this isn't to say that the way it was done in this case is the case for all site specific works, but it serves as an example of how these elements were negotiated in practice. Stories in the Woods is a science fiction inspired dance theater piece set on the grounds behind the Small Arms Society, an old armament factory in Mississauga. This piece was a promenade style show for 40 to 60 audience members that took place outdoors at nighttime in early October. The audience was led through the site by two performers and encountered multiple stationary performance spots where they would form a line, semicircle, or full circle around an individual performance. This meant that there were lots of different views to take into consideration while choreographing. There was a large team of many wonderful artists who worked on the show. Full credits are available in the description below. The first production element we are going to discuss is set dressing and set design. In site-specific work, there are a lot of set elements that already exist by virtue of working in a non-traditional space. And as discussed in episodes 2 and 3, these can provide wonderful architectural and thematic inspirations for your work. However, think about what else you could add to the space to help set the scene. Does it require a whole additional location, or will simply a few added elements suffice? For example, in Stories in the Woods, most of the site was flat open fields and old concrete lots, so Frog in Hand co-founder Noel Hamlin, who is an incredible visual artist and the set and costume designer for Frog in Hand's productions, built a tent in one part of the space to serve as additional context for the fictional setting of this story, but as well to provide shelter and seating for the audience and performers. Inside the tent, you can see there were a number of smaller set pieces and props to transform the space into Climate Research Division, Station 1352. The addition of this tent is a wonderful example of how a larger set element can be added to a space, but consider also how smaller props or set elements can further enhance the themes of the work that you're trying to tell, or to help ground your setting in a particular time period. For example, the books, artwork, paintings, or portraits, and photos that are used to adorn the walls, or even the research notes that are set on a table in a small corner. All of this can be used to further enhance your story. Inside the tent, you can see these cots that were built for the dual purpose of being set pieces and as places for the audience to sit. Audience seating is an important consideration, especially in promenade or immersive style performances, where audience members will have to walk or be on their feet for the majority of the show. This is especially important to make the show accessible for elderly audience members and for those with mobility needs. In addition, this tent provided an off-stage area in what otherwise was an entirely open field. Here you can see a shot of one of the usher volunteers talking to the safety crew from St. John's Ambulance. 
and behind them is Andrew Gabery crouched, waiting to enter the tent. Similarly, costume design is also super important with giving context to our characters, the passing of time, and also setting the atmosphere of your space. In Stars in the Woods, this was accomplished by a combination of makeup and costumes. These things were applied on the more off-stage areas or in corners where our audience members couldn't see us. This can also be supported by finding off-stage areas or creating off-stage areas with your cast members. Lighting is another important consideration in site-specific work, especially in an outdoor setting where you may not have access to power sources for your lights. Even in an indoor setting, though, sometimes the lighting setup, or natural lighting, will not be powerful enough or suitable to highlight what it is you're interested in. In Stories in the Woods, lighting was an especially important consideration because the performance took place outdoors and at night. So all the lighting had to be provided by the production team or the dancers themselves. Frog in Hand worked with incredible lighting designer Joe Pagnan and associate lighting designer Echo Joe to negotiate these challenges. Every audience member was given a flashlight for the dual purpose of their own safety and to help illuminate the performers. Here you can see Andrew Gabery in character describing to the audience the proper way to use their flashlights. The pathways through the space were lit by LED lights on posts so the audience could see where they were going and the usher volunteers carried powerful battery-powered LED lights to assist in lighting the pathways while the audience moved and to light the performers during stationary performance moments. Sometimes clever solutions were called for, like using the headlights of a car. In some moments, the dancers themselves had lights on them as part of their costumes. In this section, the dancers held small berry lights to give the illusion of a field of fireflies. This is a wonderful intersection between costume and lighting design. This section also illustrates an exciting use of the space to hide performers in plain sight, using the tall grass as an off-stage moment. Whether it's music to accompany your dancing, sound effects, or simply a means of amplifying your performers' voices, sound is another element to consider while doing site-specific work, especially because most locations do not have a sound system installed, or if you're outdoors, you run into a similar issue of not having any power. In Stories in the Woods, all sound was either created live by some of the performers, or by a wonderful sound designer named Miquelon Rodriguez. All pre-recorded sounds and music were projected through battery-operated portable speakers carried by a member of the crew as she walked with the audience. This meant the sound followed the audience as they moved. Here, you can see a clip of Andrew Gabry and Callahan Connor leading the audience between stationary performances with some call-and-response songs. Now it's your turn. For this final task, we encourage you to create your very own site-specific work and to film it. Now, as we mentioned at the beginning of this video, inclusion of all of these other production elements offers a wonderful opportunity to collaborate with experts in each of these fields. But that doesn't mean that you can't explore these things on your own as well. From the pieces that you've made so far, choose your favorite one. Consider what was working for you in this piece and areas where your story or theme could be communicated a little bit more clearly. Experiment with sound and lighting and costume. How do these elements enhance the experience of your performance? Where will you put your camera or the audience? Do you share moments with your audience? If so, what does that interaction look like? Once you are done, film your piece upload it and share the link in the comments. We would love to see what you've been working on. Thanks for watching guys. Throughout this entire series, we have talked about site-specific performances and what it is and what goes into them, such as navigating your audience, finding your site, how to create movements in these sites, and you know, putting it all together, including costumes and lightings and set designs and how all of these things can contribute to such a wonderful experience for your audience members and for yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're interested in any of the other things that we have here at Frog in Hand, we got improvisation, pedagogy, and dance theater movement. Be sure to check out our other series, and we hope to see you back here. Thanks, guys. <laughs>